I am in the attic with my furnace and for the last couple of days our house has been getting cooler and I'll go to turn the, the heat on and I can hear the, the furnace ramping up and I can actually hear the, the gas igniting but it, the house just doesn't get warm and so I came up here and to check things out now the first thing you want to do is basically you want to turn the power off at the furnace and turn the heat up at the thermostat in the house so you can control the functions here my thermostat in the house is set to 80 so I'm going to go ahead and flip it on and my furnace should start up here so the first thing that's happening is my induction motor is spinning and I don't know if you can hear it but I can hear this like little gurgling sound in my induction motor and I'm pretty sure what has happened is I'll turn this off here for a second what has happened is water has got into my induction compartment here this this larger round thing and as the the motor is spinning to create uh, a positive pressure in the combustion chamber it's moving the water around it's trying to kick the water up then of course the water is falling down so it's making this gurgling sound and in the in the furnace there's a drainage system that is supposed to take any condensate or condensation away and I have a feeling that that is going to be plugged up well the two basic tools we need for a furnace is a quarter inch and five six inch driver so I'm going to go ahead and take off some of these panels so I can take a look at the drainage system and we'll go on from there So right here is the drainage system collection box and you can see some hoses coming down to it and we're going to take off these hoses I'm going to take off the induction motor and drain it and we're going to blow some air through these lines and clean everything up over time you know with the heat from the furnace and with the moisture from the condensate or condensation whatever you want to call it it can actually grow mold uh, inside these these tubes and that's something that can plug up pretty quick so when approaching a job like this the first thing you want to do you want to de-energize everything you don't want to get any kind of electrical shock so there should be a switch on your furnace that you can turn off and this area right here doesn't have any capacitors so there shouldn't be anything that's charged now there's one two and three long screws holding the induction motor on and then there's one two and three short screws holding it on and these are all gonna be 5 16 so we're gonna zip these off and uh, release it uh, release the housing and then up here up here is a hose clamp that's holding the fresh air intake onto the induction housing we need to loosen that up so we can pull this out to remove this screw right here I gotta slide this pressure switch over just a little bit so I can get my tool in here so I'm just gonna take this little screw out of the way so the pressure switch can kind of slide down and then I can grab onto this guy and take him out so this is coming out I need to undo this holes right here and you can see look at all that nice water dribbling out all right now you may be wondering how does condensation or water get into your furnace area well whenever the heat exchanger goes from the hot cold it, it creates condensation and that condensation is routed by hoses down into the collector box here and that's the primary way of how condensation or condensate can get into a furnace and it can create quite a bit of water if your furnace is like an 80 or a 90 or above uh, efficiency now there is another way that condensation 
can get into a furnace and that is through the fresh air intake. Now, if you follow this, like in mine, it goes through my attic and up to the roof. Now, for some reason, if the cap on the outside that is exposed to the weather falls off, then it would be possible for rain or snow or moisture to come down the pipe into the furnace and deposit itself in the induction, how, uh, induction fan housing. So one thing we're also going to check is we're going to go outside, just make sure that the steeple or the cap on the induction pickup is still there. So if I take a look up here, I can see that the two intakes on my uh, fresh air intake and my combustion air are still there and it doesn't look like there's any way for moisture to enter in from outside. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this, I got a cup here, I'm just gonna tip this out and I drain all the water out of it. Looks like I got about a half a cup of water out of this housing and that's what's making the gurgling sound. So I'm just gonna put this aside for now. So you can see where I took this hose off right here. So I have a hose connection here, I have a hose connection here. I'm gonna take this one off. And I have this big bruiser here. And that's gonna require, that has a hose clamp, I need to go get a pair of pliers. So I got a pair of pliers here. Actually the lineman pliers. Gonna squeeze that, move that up a pair. So I can unplug this port. I'm gonna swing that out of the way a bit. So all the condensation comes into here, collects here, and then goes down this tube down here and into the little P-trap they have here. And this is going into my, well, this is the vent to my plumbing system, but eventually it'll go out and then drain down into the drain. And then I have a connection right here going into the T here that I need to disconnect and make sure that you can kind of see how well, it almost looks like there's some algae in this tube here. So I'll clean that up also. I have a portable air tank that's charged to 50 PSI. So what I have, I have a 50 pound air tank up with me and I'm going to go ahead and blow each of these ports out being sure to cover up what I'm not blowing up because what goes in could come back out in my face. So I'm going to blow each of these out one at a time covering everything up as I go with my fingers. And I saw a big glob of something went shooting out. And that was probably was plugging everything up. So that looks like that was the problem. So I need to reconnect all these hoses. Okay, and this last hose will be connected, but I have to put the induction motor housing back on. Let's move that right back, put it right up underneath the pipe, shimmy it around, line everything up, line up the screws. I'm just gonna hand start all these screws right now. I'm not gonna tighten anything up until everything is back together again. Now I have another video that I made that talks about 
each step of the furnace and what in order as they're supposed to go that you might want to refer back to that but working on a furnace is pretty simple now I don't actually work on residential furnaces that much I work on commercial furnaces and the one I have at my work is 16 million BTUs it's a big monster and one thing you gotta be careful around the furnace is there's lots of sharp edges and if you're not careful you can slice a finger really easy now we're just going to do the final tightening on all these fast fasteners and those are all tight we need to move the air pressure switch back into position and secure that and secure the hose clamp to the fresh air intake and we can put the hose back on here and the hose back down into here okay so everything is buttoned back together again and hopefully my thermostat has not reset itself so I can call for heat so when I when I turn the switch back on the first thing that's going to happen is this induction motor is going to come on and it's going to create some positive pressure up in the furnace and once the air pressure switch has recognized that it's going to I'm just going to think once we have a positive air pressure these switches will close the igniter will ignite and when the sensor sees that the ignition is acting the gas valve will open uh, it will ignite uh, and it will run for a moment the, the sensors are looking for you know the proof of fire proof of closure and if everything is ready and doing what it's supposed to the big fan down below will turn on this is kind of a simplified way of putting it but there's steps by steps and if your furnace isn't working you just go step by step looking at the problem and finding out what it is and just repairing one step repairing one problem at a time so anyway let's flip this on I don't hear any more gurgling in my induction motor so I'm gonna go ahead and take this right here and I don't know if we'll be able to look through this little peephole to see okay so there's my flame getting ready to ignite the gas valve is opening up and we should have that okay so now we have ignition and my furnace is working just fine so I just need to put all the panels back on tuck all my wires back in I'm just gonna stick around here just to make sure the main blower turns on and it should and there goes the main blower so we're back into business and we're gonna have a nice little warm house there are a lot of videos out there that can almost teach you how to do anything when it comes to HVAC you kind of have to be you have to know where your limitations are and you have to feel comfortable in what you're going to do if you think you're getting too far over your head there are a lot of HVAC techs out there that can help you but I have saved hundreds if not thousands of dollars from watching different videos on YouTube and if this video didn't help you solve your problem there's a video out there that will so I'd like to thank you for your time. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and stay warm. And thank you for subscribing.